That came out pretty good. Good morning, YouTube. Here we are down at the creek. It's a beautiful, bright, sunny day. So we're down here at the covered bridge. I've got the bottom plates nailed in place here. I've started to lay them out here. I'm gonna go ahead and start framing this wall here. The way that I've got this set up, the center line is roughly right in here. Um, this plate is 10 feet long right here. And then I've got a full plate here and a full plate there. So the way that I'm setting this up is basically, I'm gonna have about 58 inches of siding going all the way down, a six foot opening that's gonna come to right here. And then I'm gonna have a 10 foot opening where this plate is, 12 inches of siding top to bottom six foot opening and then like another 58 inches or so 50 whatever it is 50 or 58 on the side so it's going to have a six a 10 and a six foot window on both sides and i think what i'm going to do is set this middle plate up i may cut it to a five foot section and i may make it so this swings open as a door because we've realized it's kind of just nice to sit here on the bridge and dangle your feet over the bridge and look at the creek so i may set this middle section up to where it's basically like a swinging door um it's a little deeper right here so you could maybe do some cannonballs here in the summer or something like that so that's the plan uh, whether i make this a swinging door or not really doesn't matter doesn't change how i how i frame it so i'm going to go ahead and start we've got four by four posts and two by fours so if i can get it done today i would like to get both walls installed i don't know that i'll get any of the headers up uh, but would love to get the walls installed and braced and maybe the headers we'll see how how much it goes this isn't really a lot of framing but i am down here by myself doing all of this so that's going to be a, a little bit of a factor on the speed as far as what i get done so Let's get at it. I've got this one laid out. I just need to start cutting my four by fours to length, installing them and embracing them. So we're going to do eight and a half foot tall ceilings and then two by eight header resting on top of all of that. So let's get at it.
All right, check it out. We've got pretty much both walls framed. I'm leaving the middle open. So we've got these walls framed here. These are gonna be an opening. This is where I think I wanna cut this in half and make this like a swing gate. So you can kind of just sit here and I don't know, dangle your feet over the river and uh, enjoy the view. So, so I'm ready now to start framing the headers. I'm gonna extend them two feet past and then have a kicker come down at a 45 or whatever that angle is at an angle. So it's gonna extend two feet out come down to it double two by eight header on each side and then ceiling joists coming across these are going to be the two by eight headers i've got some extra two by fours these are going to be the headers and i've got all the rafters up at the barn so here we go we're getting closer and closer we are working solo today, again. So the question is how to get this beam up here with a 22 and a quarter inch overhang because with my board that's gonna be on the front there, I want it to be um, 24 inches overhang exactly. So how do I do that, prop this up and not have it falling off? So the way we do that is we're going to get these blocks and basically nail them, just temporarily nail them to the back side of the 4x4 so that when the beam hits up against it, it keeps it from falling over. So we're going to nail one up here and one up there. Then I can raise it up, set it in position, and nail it off. All right, now we're gonna do the second layer beam. We're gonna overlap these joints because the main weight bearings on the front, the outside edge. And so I'm gonna run these two boards long and then I'll fill in the middle to span that. We've got my second one up there. We're starting to fall down. So I nailed a little block up just to keep it from sliding off while I do this precarious job of raising this up. That's pretty darn near flush right there. We got the header beams all the way in and the end pieces here to box it in. I had a full day today. I had a meeting I had to be at. So I really only get like three hours a day that I can break away and come work on this. Maybe four if I'm lucky. So it's like a little bit at a time. So it is what it is. Um, yeah. So we got this all framed in. And the header beams are in. Well, good morning again, YouTube. Here we are, we're back down at it. 
we got the header beams and the end caps in. That's all good to go. Today we're gonna start doing our ceiling joists, at least at the post, and then our permanent bracing as well. So instead of doing uh, joist hangers here at the post, I could do those, but I don't know, they're not really aesthetically pleasing. What I've done is I've cut these little blocks that I'm basically gonna nail up at the top of the posts and just kind of make a decorative block up there. We're gonna nail those at each post and then the joists can just sit right on that. So I cut those with my miter saw up at the house and I think those will look better than joist hangers. So yeah, we're gonna nail these up and then we're gonna measure, cut these joists and then start doing our bracing. like I've done these 45 permanent bracings. I'm gonna do them on each side of these and then also coming in from the post to the ceiling joist. We've got our permanent bracing in place for the beams and rafters. I'm liking how these little blocks came out. I think they look pretty good. What do y'all think? I think that's better than metal joist hangers. Should be really close to time to, I could probably take those temporary wall braces down, but I kind of want to get some strapping and tie the posts down to the bridge deck before I do that. And it's not hurting anything to keep them there. So I'm gonna leave them there for right now. I'm just about ready to start framing the roof, really. I still need to do these diagonals from the base to there like I did on that end. I still need to do that on this end. But I'm about ready to start framing the roof. Good morning, YouTube. Here we are, we're back at it. We've got all the wall framing pretty much done. There's a few little things I still wanna do uh, just to finesse it. But structurally, we're ready to go and we're ready to start framing the rafters. I've got the ridge board down here, put over here. I've got the ridge boards down here. I've got the rafters stacked, ready to go. I've got all the framing down here that I need to start setting this. Let's uh, get going. I'm gonna start laying out for my rafters on the plates and taking some measurements and then getting ready to set the ridge board. And I'm gonna start setting the ridge board. I'm gonna put a, a post on this, not this first, but the second joist. And then the third one, which is kind of the middle, I'm gonna set some posts up there and I'm probably gonna put some blocking on each side of it to form like a little pocket that I can set that um, ridge board into. 
and then raise that up, put that in there so it's not gonna fall down on me. So probably do that at least on one end and on the other end where I'm at, I will just uh, maybe put one block. So we'll see how it goes. Let's get started. All right, so I'm getting ready to set the ridge board. What I've done is I've made this little beam pocket and I've marked out the center line here and I've measured my length for my ridge because I'm gonna have to splice several. So I've got a rafter right here, just six inches past here. It's exactly 14 feet from the outside edge to the center of that rafter. So I'm gonna split the ridge on this set of rafters right here at the end because I'll have multiple sets that I can hold the ridge up with and then splice that ridge in and then set these rafters. So what I'm gonna do to set this ridge up <coughs> I've made this beam pocket. I need to come in here and brace this, nail this in and brace this off so that I can rest one edge of the beam in here and then raise it up. <coughs> Got this scrap here that I am just going to nail in place to brace it. Now what that allow me to do is slide this beam up in this pocket and raise it up while I get it overset on that side. So now we're gonna go down and cut our ridge to length and set the post for the other end. Now I need to cut my ridge board to length, get it laid up here and then I'll be able to just drop it right on in. And we are dead level. So we're good. Now, now what we do is lay out our rafter pattern up here, just like we did on our plates, and then we start cutting our rafters and we're set. If our math is good, everything should lay in place shouldn't be any fiddling and everything. And I tell you, if you've never framed a roof, there is no better feeling than doing all this math, setting this up, laying your rafters in and having it fit like a glove. It's pretty sweet. All right, so here's one of our rafters. I've crowned it to make sure, you know, crowning it's when you sight down the edge of the board. Each board's gonna have a natural arc or it could be flat, but typically they have a little arc to it. This has got ever so slight crown this side so this is going to be the top you want the crown facing up so this is your speed square i'm doing a simple 512 pitch roof so you come down here to the common rafter scale cut that but it's super important that you get this geometry just right. If you're off a hair, it's going to really impact your rafter layout and how it fits. All right, so I've got my ridge cut up here. Now we're gonna go cut the bird's mouth. Let's walk through this rafter layout. I've got a 512 pitch. Your speed square has a hip and valley scale and then the common rafter scale. Hippin Valley is a four-sided roof where it's just a simple uh, triangle, if you will. That's just a simple gable. You're going to use the common roof scale. So you come down here on the top edge. You pivot where it says pivot. You line it up to the five over here, and you mark that line, and that's that ridge cut. This will be up against the ridge. You come down here, the measured length. You, again, do the 512 pitch. This is called the bird's mouth. This is the seat and the heel cut. 
This is gonna rest on my beam. And then this is again, 512 pitch. This is my rafter tail. So that when it's all said and done, I'm doing a 14 inch rafter tail. And that's exactly what I've got. The reason I'm doing a 14 inch rafter tail instead of a longer one is some of my uh, cuts right here are two rafters and one board. And that's basically the maximum I can get out of those boards. So even though these shorter ones, I've got longer length, um, you know, 14 inches, I usually do 12 to 18. So this is fine. So we're gonna cut this and then we're gonna go see how it fits. All right, if we've done everything right, this rafter should fit perfectly. So before I cut a whole bunch of them, let's go run up on the roof and do a test fit. Look at that. That is the joy of roof framing. When it fits, man, that's a good feel. All right, that fit perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and cut a few pairs using this as a template. And I'm just gonna mass cut them, stack them, and nail them up. Time for the first rafter. making headway we've got all the rafters set for this first ridge board they're three foot on center there's going to be one split on that ridge board but i'm going to need to take that post down put a block underneath it and put another post excuse me up there so that i can set the next section of ridge board because i'm going to have three sections and I want to splice them at each rafter. Well, I'm having too much fun to go to lunch yet, so I went ahead, set up the uh, pocket post, and put a little block on this post, and I cut this ridge board to length, laid it out, so I'm going to stand this up in there and go ahead and nail up the ridge board so that we are good to go. <music> I am doing one thing that I don't typically do when I'm framing that could lead to an error. Typically you would start your layout down at one end, run a tape down the whole length, mark everything all at once and go down. Um, versus laying out a little bit, then going from there, laying out a little bit, going from there, laying out a little bit. Because each one of those could lead to a cumulative error. You know, if you're off an eighth of an inch over you know 16 pieces it adds up um but i'm working solo and it is what it is 
and I'm not having to fit four by eight sheeting on here. And that's typically where you have a really big problem. Since I'm doing two by four purlins, I can cut them to any length. So if, if I have a slight cumulative error, which there probably isn't, um, but it does open the door to that happening. If there is a slight cumulative error, the way I'm doing the layout, it's really not a big deal because I can just come in and cut those two by fours or whatever length I need because it's all from the sawmill and they're all random lengths anyway. So um, just be aware when you're doing layouts, it's usually best to start at one end, do it all at once on both ends so that you've got great uniform layout. But again, not using sheeting products, so not a big deal. One of the really fun things to do with roof framing, not only is it just immensely satisfying when all the framing fits perfectly and your math is all dead on the money, but look down there. Look, I don't know if that shows up on camera, but those boards are straight and true. And I mean, just going to be a perfectly flat roof. All right, so now we're ready for our next piece of ridge board. We got to get another beam pocket like this. Put that over there, set that up, cut our ridge board to length. I'm going to nail a block to the underside of this ridge board, toe nail the two ridge boards together, and then the beam pocket, and then put, um, put these rafters here on this splice, and then a second set down there, and man, we are going to be done today. two sets of rafters to install. Got them cut, got them up there. Ready to put them up. It's been a long day. I'm pretty, pretty hot and tired. Ready for some food and a drink. But hey, this is pretty darn good. I'm, I'm pretty thrilled to have gotten all this done in one day all by myself. Pretty happy with it. So let's get our rafters up. All right, my friends, that wasn't bad for one day's work all by myself. I didn't know how far I'd get today. I am thrilled that I got it done so quickly and I've still got like three and a half hours of daylight. No, about three hours actually. So, that came out pretty good. The only thing that's more fun than framing walls is roof framing. And there is no better feeling when all your math, all your calculations, everything fits. And it just fits like a glove. It's just so good. You can pre-cut, go to town, cut them all at once, and install a few. I only did like three sets at a time just because I wanted to make sure, um, you know. But I hadn't done this in a long time, so it was pretty fun. So I am really excited. Um, I still have more to do. I've got to do the ceiling joists on it. I've got to do all of that. I've got to do the diagonal bracing on the actual roof structure itself. Um, I still got the temporary bracing up. I got to get all that stuff down and taken care of. I got to put the purlins on the roof. Um, so I've got a good bit more to do. I do have all the framing lumber down here to do all of that, but I do in fact have a good bit left to do. But this is a huge milestone. 